MFAC exists to accelerate the business velocity of enterprises. We are all about helping enterprise negotiate the move of the IT from the periphery of the organization to the heart of the organization. A very warm welcome to everybody for the January edition of 45 Possible. Let me start by wishing a very good morning to all the audience that has joined from the Indian subcontinent and to the countries that are west of India. And a very good afternoon to probably the countries which are in the Far East, including Japan, Korea, Australia, and so on. It's wonderful to have a global audience, and it's my privilege to welcome all of you to yet another edition of 45 Possible. 45 Possible has now really become a benchmark in terms of how to develop applications quickly using the no-code platform. So on that note, can we start the presentation? Let me share my thoughts very briefly with you before handing it over to Eklat. So Satya, can you kindly put up the slide? I think it's absolutely no surprise when we say that the future of software development is no code. In fact, there are estimates from leading analysts that say that in the next couple of years, maybe more than 50% of all software development across the globe would be using a no code platform, right? And just in case you are new to this world of no code, let me share with you the basic thinking process behind the no code platform. So Satya, if you can put up the next one. Yeah, so if you take a typical application creation journey, we know it's a typical five stage journey, starting off with ideation and then putting the data model and the business processes in place. The first two steps, frankly speaking, are the most valuable steps because this is where the, the, the software code takes shapes. And certainly that is something we would not like to be compressed. In fact, the more time we spend, the better it is. But it is in the later stages, the stage where we typically spend a lot of time in writing out the code and the stages around, uh, and the stages around testing, et cetera, is where we believe a no code platform like WEM can very significantly reduce the time. In fact, the reduction in coding effort and time could be up to 90 to 95%. In terms of testing and staging, it's again, almost instantaneous, you have instant previews, et cetera, available. And then with the click of a few mouse buttons, you can immediately go live. So that's where the real saving comes in. So if you look in terms of the value proposition that WEM APAC brings to the table, it is really about enabling business velocity. We have multiple platforms to make that happen. We have, of course, our flagship, the WEM no-code platform. We have Red Sling, which is a content management software, along with other hyper automation tools like the Aka Bot that allow you to get there. And to help you with professional services, we have the WEM Center of Excellence, which allows you to, we have the consulting capabilities, we have the implementation capabilities, and we would like to work hand in hand with our partners and customers to deliver solutions incorporating all these technologies. So if I were to quickly summarize the value proposition of WEM, and if Satya, you can take me to the next slide. Uh, in, in very simple terms, we offer you up to 10 times speed. We talked about a 90 to 95% saving in the coding time and effort. 
Because you are able to develop your front end and back end applications, you can do a lot more with very limited resources. In fact, typically you would have one senior developer, maybe a couple of junior people. You can do up to two sprints a week. And therefore, the total cost of ownership, the total cost of developing your application could be one third of what you would traditionally spend using traditional tools. And the beautiful part is that this is completely enterprise grade. So whether we are talking in terms of integration capabilities, whether we are talking in terms of security standards, you don't compromise at all. And it can definitely and comfortably coexist with all your existing environment. And additionally, you have an option of either doing it in-house in your own premises or you host it in cloud. And we have options of cloud data centers, both in Asia Pacific as well as in Europe. So with this little background about uh, WEM APAC capabilities and WEM as a platform, I would like to invite Kasi to share with you the story of Eclat Prime and, uh, and this particular uh, 45 possible demonstration that we have lined up for you. Uh, look forward to interacting with all of you. Over to you, Kasi, please. Thank you, Palab. A very warm welcome to all the folks for WEM 45 possible. Eclat Prime, uh, we started in uh, 2019, uh, July, and over the past uh, two and a half years, uh, we've been uh, in the space of uh, digital transformation and uh, hyper automation. Right now, we are a team of uh, 100 plus uh, consultants uh, working across uh, multiple domains, and uh, we implement more than uh, 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 25 different projects uh, across uh, across uh, Australia, US, uh, UK, Middle East, India, and now in Singapore. Our service offerings include uh, the inception and design consulting. Uh, we do end-to-end -end implementations within WEM, also uh, robotic process automation. In addition to this, uh, we also uh, collaborate with our customers uh, in doing uh, rapid prototyping and uh, proof of concepts and also will be able to uh, manage the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, services using our DevOps and uh, BAU capabilities. Uh, we are very excited uh, to showcase uh, this BEM45, uh, and I'll uh, hand it over to my team, uh, Prashant, Satya, and Nagajna, uh, where we will be able to build the application real-time. Thank you all. Thank Thank you, Kasi. A wonderful morning, afternoon, and good evening. Based on uh, which part of on the globe where you're located, I welcome you once again to WEM 45 Possible. So which, uh, without further ado, let's uh, look at the challenge the world is facing today, the pandemic. It transformed the face of the world in the way we operate at personal level and in the society. The first line of defense is to stop the spread. So how you, do, uh, how you do it to get the COVID test done. If the test results are positive, isolate yourself. If it is negative, then go ahead with your travel plans. So it has nev never been easy for citizens these days to get the COVID test booking done and having the test results available whenever and wherever they want. It's been a challenge for them. And also for lab technicians who perform the COVID tests, uh, it's been difficult for them to upload the test results. And we are also coming across the test reports are not accessible for government personnel, uh, for them to take any uh, action in order to sp uh, stop the spread of COVID. So these are the challenges that we are facing today. As Team Eckler Prime, we came up with a solution and we call that solution eCOVID Lab. E-COVID Lab is a unified mobile application for COVID testing. So, uh, so check it. yeah, the key outcomes of E-COVID Lab are simplified booking. So it makes very easy the booking experience for citizens and also for lab technicians for them to upload the test results. And uh, it is very easy uh, to make online updation because technicians would be updating their test results and also the citizens would be making their booking. So it is an easy process uh, to do it online. And there are uh, real-time notifications being sent through email and SMS uh, regarding the bookings, uh, cancellations, uh, etc. And even the reports are sent in live uh, environment. So. When the reports are available, uh, every user needs to have instant access to the test report. So 
one of the key outcome of this mobile application is to make the test reports available for various users for whom we are going to build the screens. Uh, moving on to the next screen, uh, we can see here, uh, we are going to build screens uh, for three user categories. The first category is being citizens. Citizens are the people who want to get their COVID test booking done on our application. So uh, the citizens are provided with uh, uh, mobile uh, number uh, and OTP enabled uh, login screen. Soon after logging into their screen, they would be able to book the appointment. Uh, there is a button provided for them. Uh, by the click of the button, uh, the booking of the uh, appointment uh, would be confirmed. Once the booking is confirmed, real-time notifications are sent uh, to as an SMS and also email as an email uh, to the citizen. And at the same time, a notification is sent to the lab technician as well, uh, saying that a new test uh, has been come up for him to do the test, uh, 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 perform the test. So once, uh, if the citizen goes uh, to the lab a test center, gives the sample, and the lab technician does the uh, testing uh, when the lab technician uploads the results. Once again, a real-time uh, notification is sent uh, to the citizen by SMS, and also the test reports are sent as an attachment uh, uh, to the email. So that's uh, the first category of uh, users who are going to be using uh, our mobile application. The second category of users are lab technicians. So lab technician. Uh, once again, uh, the mobile application that we are building is uh, role-based access. So lab technician would log into his uh, screen using uh, the mobile number, which is OTP enabled, and he would see the whole list of uh, appointments that have come up. They are categorized into three parts, uh, the, the, uh, the appointments which are lined up for today, the upcoming appointments, and maybe uh, the appointments which are already uh, concluded, if the tests are already done, then they are all categorized into completed uh, categories. So once uh, the lab technician does uh, performs a test of a particular citizen, he can upload uh, the test uh, reports um, by the click of the button. And that would be sent to citizen, as I said earlier, by email and also by SMS. The third category of users are government personnel. So these days, governments are very interested in knowing uh, how uh, the spread is, uh, and also they want to know individually if a, a particular a person has been tested positive or negative. So making these test reports available, even for government uh, officials, uh, would be handy, uh, you know, in making uh, things easier uh, for the citizens and also for the governments to make uh, necessary actions. So, uh, without further ado. Um, there we are, we reached uh, the time uh, where we are going to take up the challenge uh, to build uh, this unified mobile application eCOVID lab. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, I would like to introduce uh, WEM developers whom we have with us, my colleagues, Satya and Nagarjuna, who would be uh, guiding us through the development process on WEM platform. Over to you, Satya and Nagarjuna. Thanks, Prashant. Hi, all. I'm Nagarjuna Satya Srinivas from Bisharla. I'm going to be most man. So, uh, before going to the development, I would like to share few. Uh, I would like to add few points. So, we already developed a few flowcharts to clear and uh, uh, assign DB information, and also we consumed APIs to centralize database, and also we created few template fragments for the reusability. So, I'm going to develop the citizen screen to book appointment. From here onwards, Nagarjuna Mandati will uh, provide the narration of my development. Over to you, Nagarjuna. Thank you, Satya and Prashant. I am Nagarjuna Reddy Mandati. I'm going to narrate the developments for the chat First of all, uh, I have a good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. We have global audience today. Now, Satya is designing a flowchart, which, uh, which is a main flowchart. Flowchart is like the main logics will be in under the logics only. He's taking a discard node to discard the changes when we are uh, changing the tab layouts or tile views. He's taking one more subflow chart, which is to clear fields. We are tracking the session field. We are not putting any data in our local database. Those are subflow charts. We can reuse the subflow charts wherever we want. And he's designing a screen, which is for the citizen, where book appointment can be enabled. So we are providing a screen to the citizen, which is a book appointment. In WAM, we are calling it as interaction node, just like a screen to the end user. Now he's designing a screen. As you see, we have many controls on the platform itself. We call it as WAM modeler. 
Kazakhstan version is for version four. He is taking a panel. Instead of having all the form fields, all the book appointment form fields, we are categorizing the form fields into three panels. One is for basic details to capture the basic details of citizen. One is for the lab details. One is for the package selection. What you see is uh, he is dragging the fragments on from the template fragments. In template fragments, we have designed the form fields. We have stored the form fields over there. Template fragments we can use wherever we want. Just a reusability purpose of template fragments. He is taking the select package. Packages we have defined the three packages mainly. As you see, these are the form fields we have created in our local. These are session fields we are not showing anywhere in the mobile. As you see, he is dragging the button from the interaction, which is book appointment. After filling the form field, the citizen can able to book the appointment just by click on a book appointment. As you see on the right side, we have uh, properties such as aligning the button into center, and he is taking an icon which is when provided. We have default icons. As you see, the button is fixed. After clicking that button, what needs to be happen? So after clicking that button, we are just showcasing an alert to the end user, just a confirmation. Are you going forward, or you make to make change any make any changes? You can go forward also. You can go back and you make the changes. He is designing the screen, which is an overlay. We can call it as a pop up window to the alert. He is designing a screen which is a alert, and he is writing a test to the end user. Do you wish to continue the booking, or else you can go back? Now, as you see here, he is designing the screen. On the interaction, we have a button. He can drag it. We have many options like follow flowchart. We can guide the buttons to follow the flowchart or to follow the exits. In VM, we call it as exits, like as buttons. One is for back, one is to continue. If they wish to continue, they can continue, or else they can go back to the same screen and they can modify the results, modify the form fields. As you see, back is redirected redirect redirect to the same screen. And if he is continue, he wish to continue. He can. After clicking that uh, continue button, we are we need to send the data to the backend. We are maintaining a centralized database as uh, it is common for the web dashboard and also the mobile app. After clicking that continue, we are just showing an alert as loading screen. And uh, after sending that after booking made successful booking made, we are just sending email notifications and also SMS notifications to the citizen. As you see, he is dragged the book appointment, which is an invoke web service node. We are a central. We are maintaining a centralized database, so that's why we are calling the invoke web service as a book appointment. Through that book appointment, the data will be stored in the web dashboard, so that's why that the data will be in sync. After booking made, we can show a alert, alert to the end user to citizen. You made a book appointment successfully. Now he's taken a fragment which is book appointment animation, just an animation to the end user success screen. Now he is writing an alert. How fast he is developing? As you see, Satya is developing how fast. In fact, Vim is providing that much capability to provide a rapid development. In fact, we can call it as a visual development. We can uh, change, we can man manage the change request easily also over here. He is writing a test to the end user that book appointment appointment is successfully made. So appointment book successfully. Click test history to view the past appointments. So as you see from here, the screen itself, uh, they can able to navigate to the test history, or as they can go back to the home screen, or as they can made a book another appointment also. So he is taking three buttons over here. These are the navigation menus we have defined previously. One is home, one is for test history, one is for the book another appointment. As you see, he is just taking the navigation menus. For the every navigation menus, we it refers to a flowchart. So based on that particular flowchart, it will uh, continue the logic. He is aligned the buttons as center. Hope the so development part you, is Nagarjuna. done. Yeah, development part is completed. From here onwards, uh, Nagarjuna Mandati will share the screen and provide the preview of the mobile app. Over to you. Thank you, Satya. Now I am sharing my screen to demonstrate the web app, mobile app. Hope the audience can able to see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to here, Vim is providing feature which is environment environment. Without building further APKs, we have a big APKs over here. Without building APKs, for all the update we have main feature. Of course, Vim is providing that feature, which is a preview for Android. As you see, start the Vim preview app on the Android and scan the QR code. I have already downloaded the preview app on my local, so I am using that Vim preview app. 
at the same time i am scanning this qr code with my mobile screen i am screen casting my mobile through let's view which is a software i have already installed it as you see this is the web preview app i am scanning right now yes as you see i after scanning this qr code i can able to see the developments or to know what satya is made just now need to mention some points at this time we have made some uh, authentic credentials we have uh, provided authentication process based on mobile number otp channel create some at the time of login the number is not found in the base we are passing mobile number and we are assigning a role as citizen by default so everyone is able to access this mobile app so if the number is not found can uh, the base we are considering it as a citizen for our demo sake we are considering satya as a technician and prashant will be our airport authority over to you prashant from here onwards prashant will continue the narration thank you very much satya and nagarjuna um, we are not even 10 minutes i think so into the development process and we are ready uh, with the screens for citizen login and uh, what we are seeing on the screen is uh, the app is loading and as satya was developing we could see that he in the development process uh, he was developing sections uh, in the booking information field uh, he has uh, developed three sections where the customer is asked for his basic details uh, the lab details and also the package okay there we are folks uh, that's the page uh, screen that you would see once you are in the application and there is on the top right corner a login button uh, by clicking on that um, the screen would lead us to a, a place where it would ask for the mobile number so because uh, the citizen here is nagarjuna he is going to input his real mobile number and he would receive a real time sms notification a otp notification where he would be asked to input otp So you can see uh, the screen is loading. Uh, it will lead us uh, to the first section of the citizen screen. I think Prashant, you will agree that you know a platform like this can make a huge difference in people's digital transformation journey, right? By developing applications quickly, the typical backlog that organizations face between the demand for application and the availability of qualified programmers to a large That's extent right. this gap is bridged that right palab these days many of the organizations are looking at uh, cutting down on the cost and at the same time increasing their profitability so uh, a powerful uh, no code or low code platform like vem uh, would come really handy for the organization who are looking at finishing the projects you know well within the time and also it helps the client uh, to have a solution which is provided uh, in a short span of time so that gives them a competitive edge in the businesses uh, what they are involved in so definitely you know rapid uh, i mean the building of uh, a mobile application also uh, the real time applications the projects you know the cutting down on the time is going to play a major role uh, in in the business on a whole so that is very true kalab okay i think we are right now on the screen uh, citizen screen you can see the dashboard of the citizen screen uh, you can see all the tiles we have tiles showing the total number of active cases uh, uh, you know the positive and all such at, uh, at a glance information is provided on the dashboard and uh, nagarjuna being the citizen he wants to plan his journey maybe planning to go abroad for a holiday who knows so at the convenience at uh, convenience of his home uh, he can sit down on the sofa click that appointment button to make his uh, appoint uh, covid test booking so what we are seeing is uh, the system is going on to a screen where it is asking for the basic details of the customer uh, the lab details where he want to get the test done and also if nagarjuna is planning for a holiday immediately he is in a very urgent uh, Uh, in agency for going for a holiday so he would choose a package accordingly so there are three packages um, provided uh, so we'll look into that when we reach there 
So we are at the basic details section and Nagarjuna is quickly filling up his possible details over there, uh, like uh, the name, date of birth, as you can see on the screen. All these fields were developed by Satya right in front of us just before we are having this preview during the development process. So you can recollect and you can see the mobile number has been auto-populated uh, from the login uh, screen. So these are some of the functionalities uh, that we will come across, uh, which is uh, very much easier to, be, uh, to use. And uh, here, the other number, which is just like national insurance number in the UK and also social security number in USA. In India, we have other number, which is quite sensitive information, uh, which is a unique identification number. So it is it should not be shown uh, for the public. So the masking of the initial digits, uh, which is one of the features uh, what BEM is providing, and here, Nagarjuna is choosing a test uh, uh, center, uh, which is close to his um, home, uh, because he's residing in Hyderabad. He's looking up for the test center. Now, let me remind you folks, the lab centers which are coming up in the drop down, they are ICMR approved labs. So uh, the citizen will have, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, he will be confident that he would be approaching a test center, which, which has been approved. And also he would be confident that the test reports what are coming out of this test center are valid and authenticated. Okay, so Nagarjan has chosen his appointment date, time, and the details of lab and uh, the lab mobile number on display. Okay, this is the package. Nagarjuna is planning for urgent uh, travel because he wants to go on a holiday. So obviously I think he would go for premium package. Premium package provides uh, the reports within two hours. So this is the option what he might be looking at. So he has chosen. And with the click of book, book appointment button, he would now be able to make the COVID test booking. So uh, you can click book appointment, Nagarjuna, please. So soon after, when the booking is made, uh, a screen would appear uh, in the later section confirming uh, the test has been booked. Okay, now, okay, the provision is provided here whether to continue with the booking or to go back and to do some modification if required. So Nagarjuna obviously has entered all uh, details correct. So uh, he would go ahead uh, clicking continue and he would get a confirmation screen. Uh, just in a minute, it would appear on the screen. So it's great to see that it's almost a real time uh, development. And I think one of the interesting aspects of uh, the WEM platform is your ability to do an immediate review, right? That's so right. Because That's right. of that, we can even say that, you know, in yeah. modern parlance, we talk about the design thinking where you are able to get instant feedback about the changes you are making. And I think this allows you to do that, right? That's right. That's very true. It is so much time saving. Uh, for such a functionality to be incorporated with them. So it's like you develop something, a bit of it, and then test if it has been working or not, make the modifications immediately. And also okay. the modifications, what we are expecting here, are, can even be done by a person with a minimal experience or minimal exposure to them because them has made it really easy for people to learn and also to do minor modifications themselves. So that is very true. Okay, uh, getting back to the preview uh, here, we are seeing uh, an SMS which is sent to the citizen confirming his uh, booking and also an uh, email as well being sent in real time. Uh, I think Nagarjuna can, uh, yeah, in his email, Gmail address, we can see this email uh, which is sent as a confirmation for his booking. So you can see the test has been booked with a unique SRF ID. So this SRF ID is unique for every citizen whenever they are making an appointment. So this, uh, you know, like helps in you know following up, tracking, and also if you want to look out for test results later, we would be using SRF ID to uh, to search for our test results as well. So here you can see the booking date, uh, the lab where he would be going to for the test, the package. So, so all the details what uh, Nagarjuna has entered while making the booking are being sent in real time. So there is one more uh, provision provided on the uh, mobile application, which is test history button. Nagarjuna, if you can go and uh, show us this mobile screen. Please. Okay, so what test history does is it uh, gives us the information. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. 
please click test history. So once when we are on test history page, um, I would say screen, um, what we see is uh, a confirmation to the citizen uh, to know that the test has been uh, booked. So even on the application itself, not just the SMS and email which are sent to the citizen, but also the citizen can check for the appointment which was booked by him earlier. So the same details uh, are being given. And also if the tests are being booked for his relatives or some of his office uh, colleagues, even those tests uh, bookings would come up in the test history and the total bookings would be indicated based on the number of bookings made by the citizen. So there is a provision for cancellation of appointment in case if uh, Nagarjuna could not make the appointment. So there is a provision like this, so we can expand the mobile application with many such features as well. So without further ado, we have um, some more screens uh, to develop for the lab technician and also for the government uh, personnel. So I would invite once again Nagarjuna and Satya to make us, uh, you know, walk through the development process of lab technician as well. So thanks. Just yeah, thanks. Go Prashant. ahead and then uh, yes, please uh, be on the lightning speed. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prashant. Now I'm going to develop the lab technician screen. Uh, my development will be narrated by the Nagarjuna Madati. What do you, Nagarjuna? Thank you, Satya and Prashant. Now the appointment screen, which is related to technician. Over here, we are mapping the appointments which are related to the particular lab technician. Based on the lab, we are allocating the appointments to the particular technician. He is designing a screen for the technician. Now what you see is upload chat dragging. One is for tab loading, just an indication to the end user, screen is loading. And then API call for the upload chat, which is get appointments. So based on the logged in mobile number, which is related to the technician, the appointments will be getting from the API call. Then we can display that results appointments in its screen. As you see, he's designing a screen, which is for the technician. Instead of having all the appointments on the same screen, such as categorizing the three into three things. One is for today, one is for upcoming. Based on the appointment, the appointments will be categorized and we are displaying over here. here. As you see, this is the condition expression here. We can write our expressions, we can write our algorithm, algorithms based on our requirement. If the technician wants to go to the today, he can click on today. They can able to see the appointments for today. This is for another condition expression, which is to get the appointments, which is not to the day. API call. Count is also a function. Vem is providing default functions without writing any further codes. We can use the functions as usual. He is counting the appointments where the status has to be in progress. After book appointment is successful, we are categorizing the statuses into two ones. One is one in progress, one is completed. After booking is successful, we are changing the status of that appointment to in progress. So the appointments has to be in progress and the appointment date, like as preferred date, must be matching with the today. Today is also a function. If it is not matching, we have a property as show as false for the conditional. If there is no appointments is lined up for today, we just show an alert to the technician like no appointments to display. Those are the fragments which is the creative he is driving up on his so it can be reusable alert message can be used for other apps the one more conditional which is related to upcoming as you see for today and also the upcoming upcoming is nothing but the future dates the only change is greater than today it has to be matching with the future dates preferred date matching with the future dates now we have lined up the technicians technician fragments which is Related to opting. alert message is common for all the things. If the result is not matching, just showing an alert. Let us assume if the appointment is fixed and uh, he is uploaded the test report, it has to be completed. So we need to change the status in the back end of the book appointment. So he's taking one more tab view, which is completed. He's counting the appointments, same way like as before, but the status has to be completed. After uploading the test result by the appoint, uh, by the technician, we are changing the status in the back end, which is completed. As you see, he's tracking the fragment, tracking the appointments based on the statuses. Status must be matching with the completed. So if the counts, like uh, if the records found, then we can show that particular records or else we can show an alert message, alert message simply. As you see, these are the fragments we can reuse. Alert message is reusable, right? He's opening a fragment. Over here, we are just the full name from details of citizen, and we have a provision to upload the test results. Uh, the test result, 
assume there are no recognition is taken the citizen sample and he can he has upload then he can directly go to the upload test result and he can upload the test results now the Thanks, i think my guys now for the narration the completed, development part is completed so from here onwards uh, uh, you can share your mobile screen and showcase the preview of the app thank you This took yeah, even I'm shorter time than the previous one. We see the yeah. appointments. Which are... Yes, Pallav. No, no, go ahead. As please. I said go earlier, uh, we have a COVID. Thank you, Pallav. As I said earlier, we have a vision as review and development without building further APKs for all updates. We can simply go to review app and we can scan this QR code in our VEM preview app. I already installed the, the VEM model app. Not the web modeler, web preview app in my local. I'm screencasting my mobile screen from the review software. I already installed mobile also. Now, for the latest updates, the appointment screen, I'm scanning the QR code once more time to get the latest updates of the developments. Now, scanning the QR code. As I said earlier, we had uh, created the database values, which are credentials related to technician and also the airport authority lab technician. For the authentic users only, they can able to access the, our application. If the number is not found, we are just taking that number and we are assigning a role to the number as citizen. From here onwards, Prashant will continue the narration. Over to you, Prashant. Thank you, Nagaj. Now, once again, uh, the screens for the lab technician are also developed uh, at a lightning speed. Uh, folks, right now, we are going to see the preview of a lab technician screens. Um, earlier, I was saying that, that Nagaj now was uh, planning uh, a journey uh, for his uh, holiday abroad. So he has booked the appointment and the appointment details now have come through to the lab technician. Uh, let us, for the sake of uh, understanding uh, the user, I'm going to uh, borrow my colleague Satya. I'm going to use Satya as a lab technician to explain to you the features of uh, the lab technician, uh, login and uh, so on and so forth, uh, the features related to the lab technician. So we are very soon uh, going to enter into the lab technician's screen. Uh, as I was saying, all the users are role, are having role-based access. So uh, they, if with their mobile number, depending upon their role, uh, they would be led or logged into their particular page. Uh, so, yeah. Come to the mention over here. We are calling it with the stats on the dashboard. We are seeing some stats of forms, right? Total, general, positive. We are calling it today. That's why the screen is loading. I'm Before sorry to interrupt you, Nagarjuna. Are you already uh, on this screens for lab technician? Have you? Because uh, your screen is a little bit stuck because of the delays, I think. Well, anyway, um, while it's been looked into. I would like to know a little bit of information about. I could see the scrolling coming down here uh, about the marketplace. Uh, Pallav, uh, I'm a little bit intru intrigued uh, to know uh, about what marketplace is all about in them. Yeah, so marketplace is a uh, is a platform that we are providing to our partners and solution providers to to come and display and host their applications because you know as a platform provider, it is our endeavor to create a widespread ecosystem, right? And the more we work with our partners, the more we realize that there are such innovative ideas within the partner community and with relative ease of developing applications. We are actually in a position where we are seeing a lot of new applications getting developed. And we are also providing a platform for our partners to come together and, and, and showcase these applications so that it is available to the broader audience. Right. So this is actually something which we really believe will further accelerate the adoption of WEM uh, in, the, uh, in the world at large and, of course, within our partner community. This is also an invitation for uh, amongst the audience, if there are potential partners, uh, you know, you're welcome to visit the marketplace. Look for yourself the different types of applications that are available and please do join our community. So thank Excellent, you. Pala. Yeah, that's a nice platform for people to go on and to see and to check for the capabilities of VEM, what sort of projects and applications that should be developed using uh, the, on the VEM platform. So folks, we are back on the screen now again. Um, what Satya is trying to do is to log in uh, as a lab technician by providing his mobile number, which is OTP uh, enabled once again. He needs to input uh, the OTP. 
in order for him to log into the screen. So, um, so uh, what we find on uh, lab technician screen uh, mainly is the, yes, it's all right. Go ahead, Satya. Sorry to interrupt, Prashant. We are continuing for a demo stick. Take this with us, and the input will be open. I just use it for this mobile name. I want to switch it. Can you please provide the OTP? Yes, Nagarjuna. The OTP is... Sorry, guys. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. I think we are uh, trying to enter OTP. That's where um, uh, we left off uh, in the last page. Yeah. So you know, uh, as we bring up the screen, I have one question to Prashant and Kasi that you have been working on the web platform for the last couple of years. Sorry, there's a. What has been your experience in terms of the learning curve? Uh, how easy it is to learn, uh, you know, to get yourself familiarized with this application and start developing applications. What's been your experience? Would you like to share that, please? Definitely, definitely, Pallab. Uh, uh, the days on when? Yes. When when uh, we started with Vim, uh, uh, definitely uh, it took uh, it took our time, uh, our team uh, uh, two two weeks uh, to understand uh, Sorry, going to the going through the basics and then uh, uh, after after going through the basic uh, training uh, uh, they are uh, they they started developing uh, applications so it is really very fast and um, because of the uh, no code aspects uh, uh, and the visual development it helped our uh, team to get accustomed to them at a very uh, lightning pace that's great to hear, Kasi, that, you know, not only is the platform uh, so uh, fast in terms of helping develop application, but the learning curve also is very, very quick. That's very, very heartening. So back to you, Prashant, I think. Uh, thank you, Pallab. Yes, we are back on track. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, right now, uh, uh, as I was saying earlier, yeah. Satya OTP is logging is, in. Okay. 2661, the OTP is. Thank you, Satya. So that, Th that was an OTP which was received in real time. So uh, Nagarjuna and Satya are sharing OTP. Okay, that's where we have we are on the technicians lab technician screen. Uh, the main button that we would be discussing uh, is about the appointments. What the technician would be looking at. So, uh, as a technician, Satya would click appointments button to see uh, all the appointments which are lined up for today, tomorrow, or maybe those appointments which are already addressed. They're all coming under the category called completed. So we can recollect from the development process here uh, because Nagarjuna has made the appointment uh, for today. You can see Nagarjuna's appointment coming up on the today section. And there are sections like upcoming and completed, as I said earlier, uh, for those appointments which are lined up for future and or, or maybe for those which are already passed. OK, mm -hmm. now what Satya would do as a lab technician, click the details and verify the details if the uh, patient information is same as uh, uh, what uh, he received uh, through his mobile and email. So here, assuming that Satya has performed the test after Nagarjuna's uh, visiting of the laboratory, uh, the test has been done and the test information is ready now. So he would go ahead clicking upload test report button, so which would make uh, Satya to land on a screen initially uh, with all the details, once again, to, crawl, to verify the appointment date, time, the package which was selected, the uh, ID, as you can see mentioned in the first, the appointment time and slot, and the details of the patient as well, uh, Nagarjuna, who is uh, making his travel arrangements. So now, uh, hopefully, I think Nagarjuna has been tested uh, negative. So <laughs> let's assume. So the te uh, Satya has chosen negative uh, result, and uh, there is an option to upload uh, payment receipt as well. So payment receipt, uh, which is a PDF file, and the information is static in that. OK, so now it got up uploaded and uh, all the signature and the content, what you are seeing is static information uh, as a part of template. We made that. So that's uh, scrolling, scrolling all the way down. There is a button called send report. So when a lab technician clicks on that, there would be a confirmation, confirmation message coming up on the screen saying the test report has been sent to the citizen. 
so the citizen would receive as an email attachment the test report and also the payment receipt. And at the same time, he would receive an SMS uh, saying uh, that his test has been, uh, his test reports are available for him to log in and to download. So that's it. And you can close that, um, uh, Satya, please, and then take us to the uh, appointments section once again uh, so that we can see the status of the test right now because the test has already been performed. The test reports are already been sent. Um, let us check the status of the test. So has it been coming up? Well, it, yeah. Or maybe it needs a little bit of refreshing or what? Yeah, you can go on to the citizen's email address and show us the way he received uh, the email. Okay, uh, you can see uh, that the yeah. report has been generated and an email is sent with the attachment. So you can see the attachments over there right now. Uh, he received it in real time. Yeah, there are two attachments. Uh, the first one is the report itself. So you can see it is coming up as a proper report, uh, confirming the details of uh, the lab, the patient once again, and the test result, which is negative, which is a good news for Nagarjuna because he is planning on to go uh, for holiday. So, and then maybe you can show us the payment receipt as well. Yeah, well, that's the payment receipt. And uh, some of the information on this screen is static. Uh, giving the details of uh, the test cost, the consumables and everything. And because this is generated uh, online, uh, signature doesn't require. So, so these are the two attachments which were uploaded by the lab technicians. So yeah, now we are at the end uh, final stage of developing uh, screens for um, government personnel. Uh, so the government personnel here would be myself, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Well, I know that Nagajna is coming to the airport uh, to board the flight. I want to check for myself uh, whether the report has been negative or positive. So uh, now Nagajna and Satya will go make us walk through the development process for the government uh, officials as well. Over to you, Nagajna. Thanks, Prashant. Now I'm going to develop the government authority screens. So my development will be narrated by Nagajna Mandati or to Nagajna. Yeah. Thank you, Satya and Prashant. Now the final step, which is for the government officials. The government officials are very much interested to search the results, test results of the state citizens to verify. As you see, he's taking his upload chart, which is uh, clear session fields. We are providing a search criteria based on uh, unique things. One, one is SRFID, mobile number. Those are unique things to the citizen. We are clearing that before going to that screen. And he's designing a screen, which is for the government officials. As you see, we have a title, which is as search results having a panel in it without having CSS and bootstrap styles inbuilt WEM is providing so many input style inbuilt styles as layouts interactions and miscellaneous tabs as you see he's taken two session fields one is search results one is date of birth so the government officials can search uh, based on the mobile number name passport and an SRFID we are providing it as an SRFID which is a unique thing he's writing a help test to understand the government official, you can search based on these things. Search by name, Aadhaar, Passport, and SRFID. As you see, date of birth, they can able to search the date of birth of the citizen also. We are taking two buttons. As you see, we, when we are dragging the buttons, we can we can navigate and we can guide that buttons to navigate the flowcharts or follow the flowcharts. As you see, he's following the flowcharts, having a buttons. We have two buttons. One is for clear fields. One is for search API. After submitting the API, if you see, after after entering the some input fields, the government official can enter. After clicking on search API, we are calling an API in the back end. Based on the search parameters, we are getting the results from the API call. As you see, he is taking an expression which is to display the results. This is count of results plus concatenation with the records found. Just an indication to the government authority that how many records are found based on that search criteria. He is taking one more conditional to display the results. If the results are not found, just a message to the government official, no records found for your search criteria. That's why he is taking one more conditional, having a repeater over there. Let's assume uh, we have common names for the citizens, like uh, as Nagarshana, Nagarshana Satya. So we can iterate the records based on the repeater. 
So he's taking an alert, which is to display no records found for the end user based on the search criteria. So the government officials can understand to verify the search results by having other parameters, which is provided by the citizen. As you see, he is writing a message, which is no records found for your search criteria. So based on this, they can search again and they can uh, verify the citizens. So this is as quick as uh, any other development, I could say. Visual development is yeah. quite common and we can handle the change request easily also from here. So thanks, Mandati. The development for the government authority has been completed. So from here on you can share your screen and showcase the mobile app review. Okay. Sure, Satya. Thank you. What is what is the total time taken? Uh, let me here. share my screen. Yeah, I think it's well below 45 minutes. It's 36 minutes. There you are. <coughs> so next time on what is 36 possible. <laughs> 36 minutes with three interfaces for the citizen, yes. for the lab technician, yeah. and for the government official. And, and, I'll, uh, and just to remind you, uh, we are showing the preview of the app as well. So uh, that's you know, not just the it's just not development, but preview and discussion time. That's as well. right. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. So, absolutely. Satya, if you could show uh, the screen, uh, please, I would quickly go through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As I said earlier. Okay. One second. Okay, sharing my screen one more time. And so while that comes up, one quick question to Kasi. Kasi, you are a, a global company. You know, you have footprints practically across the globe uh, from Australia to the US. What's been your experience? How do you find people reacting to no code platform? Uh, they, they were able to see, uh, visualize uh, their uh, a business process real time, which is uh, definitely one of uh, the great uh, uh, feedbacks that we receive uh, from our customers. And instead of going through the traditional uh, requirement cycle, going through the design phase, uh, testing phase, accelerating all this uh, using a low code platform would eventually uh, help uh, businesses uh, come up with their uh, business processes and uh, uh, their go-to-market strategies are defined uh, in such a way that uh, it is it is absolutely uh, uh, near real time these days. And so I'm sure it is adding up to your client satisfaction, right? Definitely, definitely adding up to our client satisfaction and uh, clients now uh, need uh, uh, more and more of their uh, uh, business processes to be implemented using uh, uh, low-code, no-code platforms no -code platform. like that. That's great to hear, actually. So I think the last screen is also ready. Uh, ready? Yes. Yes, Palab, ready. Yeah. There you go. I think I would say this is my screen because I'm taking up the role of airport authority, who is a government official. So <laughs> now that uh, yeah, Nagarjuna is, I could see Nagarjuna coming, approaching the uh, check-in desk uh, at the airport, and I'm the government official. So. What I would do is I'd log into uh, my screen, uh, which again is a role-based access. So I would be using my own number and I'd be receiving a real-time SMS um, uh, with the OTP, which let me have my mobile ready. Okay, you can enter the oh, OTP. It's 6408 Satya. 6408. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And go ahead, clicking login, please. Okay, that's where my screen is. So once again, that's my real time mobile number. And uh, I'm straight away going to the button which I am interested, which is search results button. So uh, over there, when I click that, uh, there would be a screen appearing asking for the uh, search criteria to be entered. So the search criteria could be anything like name, other number, passport, mobile, SRF ID, which was the unique number generated during the booking. Even the date of birth can be used. So if you could go ahead uh, and uh, type the name, yeah, and then uh, click search results, then that's where we could see, there you go, all the details of Nagarjuna coming up. So even before he comes to check in, I can go onto the mobile application, check for Nagarjuna's uh, test results, and it comes out to be negative. So without any hassle, 
uh, Nagarjuna would be allowed because these days government has come up with some guidelines restricting the travel of people who are tested positive for COVID. So uh, it's a good news for Nagarjuna. So you're uh, good to go on uh, whichever yes. place is in New York that you're going to. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, so, so the details are readily available even with the government Great officials. Job. Yeah. Wonderful so, job, uh, Prashant, Nagarjuna, and uh, Kasi, I think. Uh, we all end on a happy note with Nagarjuna going on his holidays and we uh, are able to demonstrate that the actual development took much less than the 45 minutes. It actually, it took 36 minutes with all the preview and so on and so forth. And I think it kind of also brings us to the end of our uh, session. Uh, if there are any further questions, we'll be very happy uh, to take them. And if I have uh, Kasi or Prashant, you want to make some final comments. My last word to all the audience is that, look, this is where the technology is headed. You can see the sense of excitement in your ability to create applications so quickly, almost in real time. And I'm sure this makes a whole new set of opportunities available to all of you. Uh, we are very open to the idea of discussing these opportunities with you. You have the marketplace where you can come and have a look at some of the applications that's already available. We are open to have you join us as partners. We are open to have you join us as customers and uh, really looking forward to working with all of you. If there are any questions, we'll be very happy to take them. Are there any questions from the audience? either to the WEM team or to the CLAT team? While we keep getting questions in Pallav, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about the expandability features of the current application, what we have developed. Um, you can see uh, that uh, there is an integration made with an external website like Covin. Covin, you already know, that's the website where government website where we go and book uh, the vaccination. So. You can integrate uh, various other things uh, like external websites and other databases as well. For example, uh, under the government or even under the uh, citizen login, uh, we can include uh, the functionality to check the number of beds available in the hospitals. As you can see uh, in recent uh, second wave, uh, the scarcity of beds was a real problem. So the status of beds availability would also be integrated and also the vaccination status um, because these days uh, people are uh, some countries are coming up with some regulations where unless the citizen is not vaccinated um, yeah, they are not allowed to go out i know you can find some strange uh, rules coming up so in that case government officials can also have this uh, mobile application in, in integrated with the vaccination status so they go into the public arena like parks or anywhere uh, and they can check for the um, vaccination status of uh, any particular individual uh, from the streets. So, yeah. So these are some of the... Uh, so, Nagarjuna, here is a question that has come in from the audience, and they want to know if ontology and other dictionary items were added when the session started or were they already available beforehand? Uh, hi, Pallav and Satya. Uh, those ontology and dictionary items is already available in the uh, application before the session started. Okay. So I hope that answers the question from the audience. Are there any other questions, please? I think if there are no further questions, then personally from my side, I would like to really thank Eclat team for the great job that they did in terms of showing such a wonderful real real life, real time, and I would say real use application uh, for customers. And I'm sure uh, this will be invaluable for the people who have attended sessions, just not in terms of understanding what the capabilities of the WEM platform are, but also the capabilities of Eclat Prime as a very valued partner for WEM platform in terms of your skill sets and developmental capabilities. And of course, this tool is available for everybody. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank, thank you, Pallav. Thank you, Pallav. Thank you, thank you, thank you thank, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good day to everybody. Bye. Good day to everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.